Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Today's poignant story, Knights in Armor, is about a soldier's search for his family, a search that takes him into a strange situation where belief and disbelief become confused, but where truth is victorious. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, today you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that will assure your future. The many fine technical schools of the United States Army are training men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, and many others. You can become a qualified technician, trained to do an important job and do it right. For full details about an exciting career, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. There's no obligation, so plan ahead. Face your tomorrow today. And now your Army presents the proudly we hail production, Knights in Armor. Shortly after dawn on the 29th of September in 1955, the 1st Battalion of the 350th Infantry Regiment of the United States Army, known as the Red Knights, entered the long peninsula of Italy from Austria. These American soldiers were part and parcel of the Southern European Task Force and were being evacuated from Austria after the signing of the Austrian State Treaty. They were on their way to Vincenza, a quiet little city on the northern edge of the Venetian plain near Verona and Padua. The Red Knights had been there before, or at least a few of them had. For many replacements had been made in the fighting unit that had thrashed its way up the boot of Italy to become the first American unit to reach the city in 1945 after breaching Hitler's Gothic line. Climbing the long hills through the Brenner Pass was hard work for the heavy trucks. And the men inside dozed fitfully as the engines managed the hard pull. All the men, that is, except one. Hey, what's the matter? Can't you sleep, Cabby? No. Gee, this is almost like going home for you, isn't it? Hmm. Hey, look, if, if you don't feel like talking... Oh, I'm sorry, Milt. My mind was a million miles away. What were you saying? Not sure myself now. What were you thinking about? Oh, it's not hard to guess. Vincenza, in this town we're coming to, I was born here. Yet I'm coming back to something I can't remember ever having seen. How old were you when you left? Not quite four. Mussolini had just moved into Abyssinia, and Pop figured it was time for us to move out, so we left Vincenza. I've wondered about it all my life. Well, how come you still have sisters here? I never heard of anything like that. A father splitting up his own family. Well, Mom was dead. Immigration visas were hard to come by. The girls could stay with my aunt. Pop felt it was wiser to get the boys out first. My brother Giorgio was already being conscripted for the fascist youth groups. Well, Pop wanted to get us as far away from military service as he could. <laughs> oh, boy, he should see you now. Yeah, he couldn't be prouder of... He was serving himself. Once more, Giorgio spent four years in the Army doing World War II. But Pop says it's different in a democracy. Anyway, my aunt died during the war, and that was the last we ever heard of Marisa and Rosanna. Well, how about Giorgio? Couldn't, uh, couldn't he find your sisters? He spent the whole war in Bougainville in the South Pacific. Ah. So now it's uh, kind up to you, hmm? No wonder your thoughts are a million miles away. Yeah, it was a real lucky break, my being sent to Vincenza. Maybe I can pick up All the right, trail. All right, guys, you better can that chatter for a while. Try and get some rest. We've got a long, tough day ahead of us. Buongiorno, signore. Buongiorno. Son of an American. Hey, parle inglese. Speak in English, my young friend. 
I've worked with your army. I understand your language. Oh, that's a relief. I suppose I ought to speak Italian a lot better than I do, but Pop insisted that we always speak English at home. Your father, I take it, then, was of Italian birth and extraction. Yes, he came from here in Vincenza. In fact, I was born here, too. Yeah. His name was Paolo Cabrini. I'm Ezio Cabrini. Ah, this is a fine name here in Vincenza. The Cabrinis were men of honor in the olden days. They were knights. Ah, my pop used to tell me that, too. Can I be of any help to you, Signor Cabrini? Cosice, what has happened? Well, I'm, I'm looking for my family. Uh -huh. If I'm not mistaken, I think I still have two sisters living in Vincenza. I'd like to find them. Ah, then you have come to the right place. Here we have endless books with infinitesimal details. Births, deaths, marriages, baptisms. Uh, one thing, though. There have been many Cabrinis in Vincenza. I will need more information to take me to the right book. Ah, I have the perfect solution. You were born here. We will start with you, eh? Let us find your place in the book. Then it should be relatively simple to find your family. Grazie. That should be fine. It will only take a minute. The registry should be over here somewhere among the seats. Uh, ah, here it is. These books get heavier as the years pass. Or, or perhaps the fact of the matter is that I am not getting any younger. <laughs> now, now, let us see. Uh, it should be about here. Cabello, Cat... Oh, I'm sorry, signore. There must be some mistake. Oh, wh what's wrong? It is strange. There is no page marked Cabrini. No, none at all. I, I cannot understand this. The commendatore will be greatly disturbed. I'm sorry that I cannot be of any help. Oh, maybe. Are you sure? The positive. The page is not here. I do not know what to say. Oh, well, well, thanks. Thanks, anyway. If you get, if you get any information out of your other books, would you... Will you let me know? We're staying at the barracks I now. know, Signore, and I most certainly shall, the moment I find anything. I, I cannot understand this. The commendatory will be most disturbed. Hey, shut the door! Well, give me a chance to get in, will you? Any luck, Cabby? Not a bit. I don't understand it. How can somebody just disappear off the face of the earth? Look, wh why don't you give up? Why don't you wait till spring? Then you can really do a job in all these small towns in the mountains around here. Hope to see them before Christmas. Here it is February already. Yeah. Oh, boy, you can bet it's February. Gee, I had no idea it gets so cold in Italy. This is more snow than we get in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Hey, Milk, thanks. You've been a, a real pal. I know I've been driving you crazy with all this stuff about my sisters. Oh, look, you do the same for me if the cards were turned. I'm beginning to think you're right. There's no use batting my head up against the wall. What do you say we do something this weekend? Hmm? We've got until Monday morning. Come on, come on. Well, you haven't been further than the town clerk's office and those old addresses your dad gave you. You know, this is great country. You were born here. You should learn to appreciate it. Okay, you sold me. What do we do? Uh, now you got me. I haven't been further than the movies and the post exchange myself. I'll try anything once. Let's go. I can't get up with these on. Are you kidding? Who's going to be helping me while I'm helping you? Oh, man, these torture devices we're wearing aren't made for people to use from a sitting position. Hey, Milk! Huh? I'm up! <laughs> Let's see if I can ski over to you. I'll give you a hand. Boy, oh, boy. Whose idea was it to go up to the top of this toe? The instructor said we shouldn't attempt it for weeks yet. Well, if I'm not mistaken, it was your idea. Now, come on. Yeah. Upset Daisy. <clears throat> My aching back. <sighs> Now, how do we get back to town? I'm lost. Yeah. Wait. Hey, signal this guy coming down the hill. Oh, I'm getting cold. How'd you like to be able to ski the way he does, huh? No, I'll never make it. Hey! Hey, over here! Hey! Hey, he's slowing down. It's a girl. Buongiorno, signori. Cosa c'è? Oh, oh, scusi. You are American. Soldiers from the town. Yeah. We sure would like to get back there, too. You are novices, no doubt. We're out and out beginners, ma'am. How far do we have to go? To Vincenza? Oh, quite a way. I wouldn't recommend it if you are new with skis. You are on the back trail. It might be wiser if you were to remove your skis and hike for about a quarter of a mile to Alonzoro. Straight that way. You cannot miss. Hiking, huh? 
Well, that's our specialty. Uh, and there you will find a bus that will take you to Vincenza. Well, thanks very much. We certainly appreciate your help. Uh, incidentally, uh, what's your name? I'm Mill Walker. My buddy's name is uh, Ezio Cabrini. Uh, we call him Cabby for short. Uh, you, you say your name is Cabrini, and you were born in Vincenza by chance? Well, yes. How did? Uh, Arrivederla, signore. I have to. Oh, wait a minute. I will hold. Wait a minute. She's gone. You'll never catch her in a million years. She knows something, Mill. She knows something about me and my family. Well, maybe. It's going to have to wait for now. Let's concentrate on getting back to town. Now we're going to wind up AWOL if we don't hurry. Yes, they told me at the ski lift that she lived here. It's a rather thin, dark-haired girl. Eugenia, I do not expect her back today. Well, wait, don't shut the door. When do you expect it? Excuse me, signore. I must go. I have things to do. Please, can't you tell me it's very important? Uh, Let him in, padre. I will talk to him. As you wish, Gina. Come. Come in here where we can talk. Now, please, uh, won't you be seated? I must apologize for being so rude. You see, we knew one day you or one of your brothers would come. Father, this is Ezio Cabrini. The son of Paolo? See. I am not mistaken, am I? There was only one family of Cabrinis in Vincenza. That's correct. You... You want to know what has happened to your sister? Please, signorina. Are they still alive? I... I honestly do not know. It was a day of shame, the day they left. And no one knows where they have gone or what has become of them. A day of shame? It will not be pleasant for you, this story. It was the reason I ran away from you on the ski slopes. I did not want to be the one to tell you. But you must be told someday. As you know, Signore, this whole area was occupied by the Nazis during the war. And there were soldiers on our streets then, just as there are now. But, well, things were different. The Nazis were our enemies, just as you are our friends. But with certain people, things were different. And so, as God is my judge, Signore, those were the facts. Collaborating with the enemy? I can't believe that. I refuse to believe it. I am only stating the facts as I know them. Their shame, Ezio, was the shame of Vincenzo. The Cabrinis were people of honor in olden days. Yes, I know. They were knights. I'm sorry. You say they were driven out of town and no one has ever heard from them since? Yes. Look, I have to find them. Now more than ever, I have to find them. This isn't true, Signorina. What you've told me isn't true. It can't be. As you wish. But the facts are there. Look, I I know what's inside of me. I know what my reactions will be to a particular set of circumstances. I know when I'll be afraid. I know that I'll cry at sad movies and yell my head off at sporting events. Just as I know myself, I know my brothers and sisters that I grew up with. I can't lie, Signorina. I can't cheat. I can't deceive anybody. I couldn't if I tried. I'd light up like a neon sign. It's the same with my whole family. My sisters never did such a thing. They couldn't have. I won't argue with you. Your tragedy is great. Uh, Come, Mitch. I think you had best go now. It's getting late. It's all right. I'll go, but I'll be back. I'll prove you were wrong. Goodbye, Ezio. I hope so. With all my heart, I hope so. We'll return in just a moment for the second act of Knights in Armor. But first, young man, be honest with yourself. Have you reached a standstill in your life? Are you worried about your future? And most important of all, are you feeling dissatisfied with yourself and your own personal development? If this description or any part of it fits you, it's about time you investigated the opportunities waiting for you when you enlist in your United States Army. Every man in the Army has a skill, and more often than not, the Army taught him that skill in one of its fine schools. The Army offers an interesting present and a secure future, with plenty of promotions along the way. If you think you measure up, stop in at your local recruiting office and see if you qualify to wear the mark of a man, the uniform of your United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Knights in Armor.
Buongiorno, signore. Buongiorno. Why didn't you tell me the truth? I'm sorry, signore. I do not understand. You told me there was no page marked Cabrini in your town register. I was not lying, my son. There is no such page. It no longer exists. It was destroyed on the day of your sister's infamy. I could not tell you that the day you walked in. You were not ready to accept such a fact. I am not ready to accept it now. Molto bene. So it shall be. What can I do for you? You can tell me where my sisters are now. I can tell you that? My father once told me that in every Italian town there is a registrar of births, deaths, marriages, and that this man knows more about the people of a town than they know about themselves. Perhaps this is true. Perhaps? Signore, your sisters have disappeared off the face of the earth. Isn't it just as well that they have done this? What good can come of unearthing old ruins? Well, Pompeii was found in such a way. Are all the members of your army so persuasive? Well? I'm not sure. There were rumors of all sorts after they were driven from our town. I am not sure. What did you hear? Uh, about 20 miles south of Vincenza are the sisters of San Marco. They are poor, uh, terribly poor. They have taken the vows of poverty. Well, it was a rumor that... Oh, Signore, please, do not ask any more. It is impossible for me to discuss these things with you. One more question. Uh, please, Signore, uh, enough. Arrivederla. <laughs> Come with me, Gina, please. It's in the mountains with the snow and all. I'll never be able to make it alone. Dio, I couldn't go with you. But you ski like a man. I'll need your help. I understand you can take the bus to Adriani, and then it's clear skiing all the way to San Marco. We've got to go now. Once the snows have melted in another month or so, the roads are completely impassable. By spring, only the army knows where I'll be. Please, Gina. It's now or never. All right. I will go. <laughs> again, Ezio. They do not hear us. They're coming. Madre de Dio. My children, what are you doing out on a night like this? Uh, we're looking for the convent of the Sisters of San Marco. You have come to the right place. Oh, but come in out of the cold, per piacere. Our visitors are few and far between. You are an American soldier, are you not? Yes, I am. And you, my child? You live in Vincenza. You have a good memory, Mother Superior. <laughs> you were a little girl when you were here before. Now you are a grown woman. God has provided well for you, my daughter. You've been here before? Uh, I couldn't tell you. We came here to hide from the Nazis. And my sisters? They stayed in Vincenza. But you too must be cold. Let me get you something. Some wine, perhaps. Oh, better still, I have tea. Oh, please, no, Mother Superior. Uh, I know what you are thinking, that we have taken vows of poverty. Well, believe me, we are never too poor that we cannot give a cup of tea. Uh, go in there, wait by the fire. I will be with you in a moment. Please, Ezio, I, I know you are disappointed, but it's something that you had to find out for yourself. I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. I won't believe it. Where do the rest of the sisters live? There is a huge wing that adjoins these rooms. They are quite barren. There's a chapel where they pray, a dining hall, and a kitchen. That's it. And my sisters would live in that wing, through there? Yes. I couldn't face them if it were true. Oh, oh, we can still go. The Mother Superior knows nothing of why we're here. We'll stay. Ecco, questo è per lei. I be careful, it is hot. And now, my children, why are you here? There are few visitors with the sisters of San Marco. Ezio. Well, this is very difficult for me, sister, to be so near to someone I have loved and, and yet be so afraid to face them. I do not understand. There is someone here? Yes. I, I have been led to believe that my sisters are here. And you are looking for them? For what reason, signore? Uh, perhaps I can explain. There were rumors in Vincenza that two women had collaborated with the Nazis. After the war, they were driven from town. It was told that they had come here and took vows. These were his sisters. It was our shame that such things happened. But why bring pain to old wounds? 
There is nothing to be gained in such a quest. Mother, in ancient Vincenza, my family, the Cabrinis, were knights. Men who sought to free their medieval world from tyranny to make right what was wrong. In our country, America, we are taught the same things that these men live by. Honor and justice. I feel certain a wrong has been done here, that it is up to me to make right. You are Ezio Cabrini. And they are here. Well, tell me, please, was I wrong in coming? Are you sure you want me to stay? Please, Gina. Why don't you do as the Mother Superior asked? Wait until morning. I think it's best. You've had enough sorrow for one day. Oh, no, I, I have to go on now. With Rosanna gone, there's only Marisa left to help me. I've got to know, Gina. I couldn't rest if I didn't know. Uh, you are right. For the first time now, I begin to understand why you must know. Somebody's coming. Oh, the Mother Superior and another nun. I think you two should know each other. Sister Marisa. You remember... Your brother, Ezio. Ezio. Marisa. Cry, mio fratello. There is good reason to cry. Come, my child. Let us go talk. Yes, mother. like talking I feel like listening my sister Rosanna died of pneumonia that very first winter in the convent there was nothing anyone could do they had suffered so much that life had no meaning for Rosanna when she was taken ill there were no medicines and with no resistance well you know and Marisa Marisa had to survive there was no vindictiveness but a wrong had been done and and she knew with faith in God that one of us would return to right that wrong couldn't she have written? In simple piety, there is no answering her reason. What happened? During the Nazi occupation, there were few people in Vincenza who openly defied the Nazis. Not that there was open collaboration, but people went about their everyday tasks of living. With Marisa and Rosanna, it was different. They did openly know the Nazi soldiers and go with them. But I don't understand. Well, fantastic as it might sound, they had been approached earlier that year by... A man who was a stranger in Vincenzo. Please, I cannot talk to you. Marissa, a moment. How do you know my name? I know much more about you than that. You are Marissa Cabrini. You have a sister, Rosanna. Your father and two younger brothers live in America. Until recently, you lived with a maiden aunt who died. Now you and your sister live alone. You must be a gypsy to know all this. Or something else. A gypsy? Something else, yes. Can I speak to you and your sister? It'll only take a moment. It was very simple. Carlo Vitali was a neighbor of ours in America. He had joined the OSS and had been parachuted behind the Nazi lines in Italy. It was his job to find the strength of the enemy in that area and then organize guerrilla forces to undermine and disrupt that force. My sisters agreed to help. It was impossible to tell anyone in town of their mission. And things went very well for Carlo Vitali until early in 1945, when our division, the Red Knights, started pounding away at the gates of Vincenza. Now, the Nazis were scared. That encouraged Carlo and his guerrillas to perhaps be a bit more forthright. Marissa. Marissa. Over here. Carlo, you're safe. Were you able to find out? They are like stuck pigs. Good. The overlordsman told Rosanna everything. They are pulling out at sunset, cutting through the back road. Good, good. Now, we've still got time to mine the road. One of us must go tell the Americans. One of us must stay. Marissa, I think it will be safer for you to go. All right. But be careful, Carlo. When this is over, little one, there are so many things I have to tell you. Look, Damo, Marissa. Carlo. Arrivederci. Arrivederci, la Marissa. And then? 
I think you can pretty well tell the rest of it. Carlo's band of guerrillas were ambushed by the Nazis and killed. Marisa went into town trying to reach the Americans. Since their mission had been kept secret, no one in Vincenza knew of their brave work. They only knew that Marisa and Rosanna had been seen on occasion being friendly with the enemy. So with the death of Carlos and his men, there was no one left to tell them otherwise. The rest of the story you know. It's a tragic tale. Come, come. We must tell everyone. There is a way of righting such a terrible wrong. Oh, wait, Gina. Now, what's done has been done. Over ten years have passed since those terrible days. People have forgotten. Marisa has found happiness where she is. What good could come of unearthing old ruins? No, I think this night's quest is over. You are right, Ezio. Or at least part of the quest is over. I still have the fair lady to win. Your army recruiter is a good man to know. For instance, he'll show you how high school graduates can pick their own technical training from more than 150 different courses. He'll get you a written guarantee that a place in the class is reserved for you all before you enlist. Or your recruiter can get you into the army branch of your choice, armor, artillery, infantry, engineers. Name your spot and it's yours. You'll get choice, not chance, from your army recruiter. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>